consume this delicious banana. What the dog? Hello, welcome to stream. I'm streaming today. This is awesome. And we're streaming. I'm ranking Puyo Puyo characters on a tier list because I religiously play Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. For I lost no reason at all other than because I can. I'm, I'm also here, but I, I know nothing about this game, so I'm gonna let him do this. I really like this game. Uh, a lot of the characters are super cool. Uh, you got Sonic the Hedgehog. You can't really go wrong with him. And yeah, so. Uh, not even, not even gonna mention four faces. No, <laughs> I mean, you, can, you okay? Maybe you can go wrong with Sonic, but I, I, I don't want to turn this stream into a scream my eyeballs out of my head over Sonic Forces stream. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll consider that another day. But uh, for now, hopefully my audio is working as it should. It is. Sweet. So we're going to stream and I am going to record. Then we're going to start off with this dog, man. If I'm going to be honest, I forgot his name. And I, but I don't think he matters all too much. Uh, I do. I don't remember his name, but I do remember a lot of other things. Like how I thought he was. Real. I'm hearing something. What up? So... Now we can actually get into putting this guy into F tier. Fuck this guy. He is just, he is very unlikable. I don't like him. Hello, uh, Dr. Dog. <laughs> I don't like him very much. He's very annoying. Uh, then we have Allie, who's, uh, we'll get into her counterpart later, but Allie is meant to uh, spread love across the world and thinks it can do just about anything if you put your heart to it. Um... And this sentiment does not change during her spells. Uh, it is not as annoying as the dog, but it's it doesn't get better with her alt voice. Uh, so we're going to put Allie into C tier because, yeah. Then we have Amity. Amity or Amity, don't know, don't care. She got her start in Puyo Puyo Fever back in like the 2000s. And <laughs> I never fully understood this, but their school's name is, <laughs> and I shit you not, <laughs> uh, Primp Magic School. I can never get over the name. It's so weird. But uh, I always found it odd how they named it Primp Magic School. I thought that was a, a bit of a weird one. But, yeah. Think, like... Sayori from DDLC if she wasn't I cannot say that on Twitch. Oh well uh think Sayori from DDLC if she wasn't uh spoilers. Uh Carbuncle, the best character. That's a lie. I don't like him. He's annoying. D tier, he's annoying. I don't like him. Then we have Arl, the main character. Yes. The main character. Uh, now the whole deal with Compile and Puyo Puyo is quite strange. She is cool. I, I guess. I, I don't know how to place Arl. She's the main character, so I, I guess I gotta put it her I gotta put her in A. Then we have Draco Centauros. She can breathe fire, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> she's a dragon, right? That's yeah, because Draco. Yeah, if that makes sense. Uh, think like win every possible beauty contest ever, and you've got Draco Centauros. I'm not even that, shitting that you. So cringe. Her character, like, bio in Puyo Puyo is, like, trying to win all of those all the time. But Draco is also going into A tier. Uh, because, I don't know. It's it's funny. Then we have Ecolo. I actually really like this guy because I've, I've seen, I've heard some people say that his alt voice is really annoying. And essentially what it is is just him speaking backwards. Um... It's just his first, like, voice, but backwards. It's word for word, I think. And I think that's pretty funny. So he's gonna go into S-plus tier. I think that's really funny. 
Um, and then we have S because she is green like the S block in in uh, Tetris. Yeah, very very cool. Uh, she her second alt her alt her alt voice makes her sound like she's straight out of Texas, which is why I gotta put her in S plus tier. Her alt voice is fucking awesome. And then we have X, based on a pentam a pen pentamino, a pentetrami. He's based on one with five sides, not four. Um, and he's actually voiced by Matt Mercer, which that automatically gets points from me because he's he plays Yusuke. That's automatic points from me. But I also actually really like his alt voice. It's like a lot deeper. And I think that's really cool. Which is why he's going into S plus tier. <laughs> and then we have the classic goth girl, Felly. Who I don't like. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. There's, there's a vibe I'm getting from her that I don't like. Uh, probably because her alt voice is super deep and annoying. And I hate it. Uh, and then we have... J and L, based on the J and L Tetris blocks. Very unique and original, I know. Uh, and they're, like, twins, I think? I think that's how that works. Um, they are constantly doing the funny ha-has on their teammates. It's really funny. Kind of. Uh, I think in their alt voice, one character takes the lead. Like... A single character will take the lead in their first voice, and then the second voice, another character takes the lead. I don't know, but either way, they're cool. B tier for them. And then we have this motherfucker right here. Mr. Book in Hand. One glass of your glasses is pure white, while the other has a single eye poking out. You suck. I hate your alt voice. You sound like an, you are literally an actual child when in his alt voice. Like, if you listen to his alt voice, you'll want to die. Um, it is awful, and I hate it. And then we have Lemrez, who eats a lot of eats a lot of candy, a, a lot of it. I think one of his abilities, which these characters have, I guess, is to make some fucking candy just show up out of nowhere. Don't know why, but they just do. Um, and so that's why I gotta put him in S tier. His alt voice is actually him. Um, I don't know if I can say this on Twitch, so I'm going to play it safe. Him a hyped up on sugar, if you know what I'm saying. His second voice is literally him hyped up on sugar. It is insane. Um, and then we have Maguro, whose one unique ability that I know of is having all of his sentences end with a star at the end of it. That is literally all he does. His sentences end with a star. He also is very good at the game where you thwack a ball with a hammer, but the hammer is the ball is tied to the hammer. And he's very good at that. I, I don't know. I, I guess C tier for Maguro uh, because he, he's cool. Apparently, his hair is down, and I, I shit you not. I, I don't know if this is legit or not. But his hair is down because his eyes are so... Uh, majestical to stare at that women would not leave him alone. He is that much of a of of an awesome guy. He's too good looking. He has to keep his hair down over his eyes, and he is just that that kind of guy. And then we have, uh, oddly enough, dark moral and light moral are separate here. So we'll start with light moral first, and then we'll get into dark moral. Uh, light moral in this story actually created another character that I'll get into later. Uh, she is, like, the one who keeps the two... So, like, if Puyo Puyo and Tetris fuse, that's a really bad thing, and that's not supposed to happen. Which is the whole reason Marl exists, is to prevent Puyo Puyo and Tetris from ever fusing. Uh, but, uh, things kind of go sour when she gets, uh, hashtag... Oh, something just fell off of my table. Uh, hashtag lonely. And she wants a friend. And this is where Squ <laughs> I hate this guy's name, but I really love his voice actor and his acting. Uh, he she creates squares. Uh, 
Can you guess what his primary mode is? <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, so, these each character has a primary mode. And, yeah, some characters' primary mode is Puyo, some is Tetris. All of the Tetris-based characters, like, all of the Tetram Tetramino-based characters, their base, te their main game is Tetris. Most of the Puyo characters are Tetris-based, but some aren't. Uh, I know Lemrez is a Tetris character, but he's from the Puyo Puyo series. It's inconsistent, but it's whatever. Um... Marl is a Puyo character, and Squares, surprisingly enough, I don't know how this happened, but he is a Tetris character. Um, and between the two, Marl is meant to make sure that the, all the world, like the Puyo world and the Tetris world, they're like supposed to have fun. They're like, wow, you guys are having fun. That's good to know. Like, she's meant to make sure that the worlds are like fun, I guess, and that really plays into her character i guess um and then squares is making sure that everything is correct in the world um but when he receives this news uh he's like okay well they are having fun why don't we fuse them together which as i said earlier cannot happen because then they just implode on each other and <laughs> they straight up to my knowledge they implode so, we literally cannot have the Puyo and Tetris worlds fusing for much longer. Um, but Squares is like, I, I want, I mean, if I'm supposed to do what's right and they seem happy, we should make them happier by fusing the worlds together. And he doesn't seem to understand that Morrow is literally, the, I think the only reason Morrow exists is to make sure that does not happen. And Squares just kind of does it anyway. And that kind of causes Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 to happen. Um, but I, ca I went on a really long, like, tangent there. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I like this game, can you tell? Uh, <laughs> um, but we have Marl, Light Marl. Um, she's cool. I mean, if she's meant to make the world's fun, then she's certainly doing her job, so I guess I gotta put her in S tier. And then we have Squares. I like his voice actor. I don't know his name, but I really like his voice actor. He does a really good job. Uh, but like I said, Squares is a little dumb, so I'm gonna go. Ahead, I'm, I'm gonna put him in B tier because he's a little stupid. And then we have a uh, uh, Dark Marl. Here, here uh, we go. Here I uh, go. <laughs> um, <laughs> How's uh, this? Okay. Isn't uh, this this is getting fun? fun? I'm just gonna. Slap her straight into S plus tier. If you've paid enough attention, you'll notice that she shows up on my YouTube banner. Uh, she was in my intros, which I, for whatever reason, stopped using. Uh, she's in the outros of videos. Uh, she's in the Twitch banner. She's uh, She's been places. And that's because she's uh, really cool. Let's go with that one. Uh, her voice actor does a really good job at like selling the character. Uh, I forget her name. I think it was, like, Megan Lee Harvey or something like that. I hope I, I hope that's right. I don't want to check because I'd, I'd seem stupid. But, uh, she's Can also the... Huh? I do nothing. I made a horrible joke. Okay. Uh, she's also the voice actor for Sophie in Persona 5 Strikers. I thought that was cool to find out. Uh, but she does a good job at selling both Light and Dark Marl. Uh, she has a wide voice range when it comes to, like characters like this uh so i think she did a good job and then we have o which is similar to carbuncle i don't like i don't like how they talk like a pokemon where they just say like one thing it's not even their name uh o literally says like p over and over uh and then carbuncle's like doo -doo -doo. I, I hate it it's so stupid and i hated saying that <laughs> i hated saying that god it's awful I, you know what no they don't deserve D tier. They deserve F tier. Fuck Carbuncle and O. Uh, that was so dumb. I hated saying that. Anyway, we have Rafina, who is that classic snooty rich girl. I think. I don't know. That's the gist of what I get out of her character. Uh, and the bio in Puyo. I I'm sorry for calling back to Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 a lot. I mean, that's like the only experience I have with these characters. Other than uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris 1, 
uh, and like a couple past Puyo Puyo games, and that's it. I haven't played any of the Fever games. Uh, with, there's only two of them, so I guess it's not big, not that big of a deal. But there's a lot of Puyo games that I'm missing out on, and that's because uh, they're expensive because uh, they're old, and I could emulate them. Uh, and I'm going to. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll play these games one day. But anyway, Rafina, she's the snooty rich girl. But not terribly snooty, you know? It's not awful, but it's not tolerable, so uh, uh, D tier for you. And then we have Ringo. Uh, <laughs> uh, she carries an apple an awful lot. And I believe it's either because her first or last name in Japan translates to Apple. So, that's cool. Uh, she's like the main character of one of the Puyo, uh, one of the Puyo games. Oh, okay. Actually. So, there is a set rule for Puyo Puyo games that they've been following for the past few years. Um, and it, it is the ARS rule. Um, and these can be set. Uh, these can be separated via eras. So, like you talk about the compile era and when compile owned Puyo Puyo, the main characters were considered to be uh, Arl, Rulu, who I'll get into later, and Shezo, who I will also get into later. Uh, the whole ARS thing has just been continuing since the Puyo Fever series of games. Their main set of characters are Amity or Amity, whatever, Rafina and Sig who, again, I will also get into later. But this new generation of Puyo games doesn't actually do this. Kind of. You see, Ringo, Maguro, and Risakuma are considered the main characters of this current generation. But uh, Ringo and Maguro don't fit the ARS rule. However, their last names do. I don't remember their last names, but I know for a fact their last names follow this ARS rule. And then in Puyo Puyo, like the 3DS Puyo Puyo games, we had Ali and Raffi Soul, who I'll get into later, a lot of characters. Um, they are considered the characters of their series, but there is no S. Uh, there is no S character for their third, uh, in a, their merry band. Uh, maybe Sonic is the S we needed, uh, but who knows. Uh, anyway, back to Ringo. She's like the classic run-of-the-mill main character girl. Like, not hateable, but not super likable. So, uh, C-tier, because I like apples. Apples taste good, and I'm going to eat an apple later. Then we have... Raisakuma, he's awesome. S plus tier. I like him. He's very cool. Uh, and then we have Rulu, who is very much into uh, this guy right here. I'm not going to say his name because I want to explain the whole thing with him later. Uh, she's okay. In Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and 2, because I think they recycled the voice line that I hate. Uh, her, one of her voice lines just sounds like she's running out of breath halfway through, and I don't like that. Uh, so, like, her, a lot of her spells are karate moves, so that's cool, I guess. But when she's saying wind kick, it's, like, halfway through, she sounds like she's running out of breath. But that doesn't deter from the character herself, so C tier for Rulu. And then we have this guy right here. I, I don't know if I can say this on Twitch. But uh, his name from many moons ago was, uh, I shit you not, my friend is playing VR chat. Go away, I don't care. Uh, his name was yeah. Satan. In the compile era, this guy's name was Satan. And I'm surprised. But this was eventually changed to Dark Prince. And... Uh, again, voice actor bias here, but he's voiced by Xander Mobus uh, in the current like series of games. In Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and 2, he's voiced by Sa Xander Mobus. And again, with Matt Mercer and Megan, or Me yeah, Megan Lee Harvey, I think. 
their persona voice actors. This guy's also the voice actor for fucking the announcer in Smash Brothers. Don't discredit that. So, yeah, he's already up in the big leagues. He's also the, currently the only voice actor in Smash to return for a second game. Every single Smash game, we've had a new announce announcer. I don't know why they didn't bring back Pat Big Money Cashman for for 3DS and Wii U, but either way, they went with Xander Mobis, and I think that's pretty cool. And then we have Shezo. Uh, he's a cool character. He's that one character that everyone, like, he's used for their subtle way of getting in innuendos because he has awful social skills and is really good at creating innuendos. Like, you watch a couple of his scene, like scenes with him in the adventure mode of Puyo Puyo Tetris 1, you'll see that he is very easily swayed into saying some things that sound like they should be something else. Um, especially during, uh, oddly enough, his chase with Sig, where he's been he's chasing after Sig. I think that's actually his whole adventure shtick. But it's really easy for him to uh, get himself into an innuendo or two. Uh, so I think they're funny. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in B tier because I think they're funny. And then we have Sig. Now, when I played the Puyo Puyo Tetris One demo, I had no idea who any of these fucking characters were. But I saw Sig, and I was like, I like this guy. He's got blue hair, one blue eye, one red eye. He's got a red arm. That's cool. I then come to realize that uh, there is a reason why he has one red eye and one red arm, uh, which involves this son of a bitch right here, uh, which uh, I'll get into later. Uh, anyway, either way, Sig, he's pretty cool. His alt voice is pretty annoying, though, so I gotta put him in A tier, other than what would be S tier, but, uh, his alt voice kinda drags him down a bit. And then we have this guy. I can't pronounce his name for the life of me, but he likes disco, so I like him. S tier. Uh, <laughs> and then we have T. Hey, guess what? Voice actor bias coming in. This guy's voiced by Max Middleman. <laughs> uh, who, in case you don't know, is none other than my main man, Ryuji. You, you, voice actor bias, he's just awesome. And I, I mean, I like T as a, his character too. His alt voice also makes him sound like he's like awesome and like cool, even cooler. And then we have. Uh, the very originally named Witch. I don't know what to think of her. Because I have hardly seen her on screen ever. She looks like she has fettuccine for hair. And to be frank, so does Maguro. And so does Squares. But either way, D tier. Because I haven't seen this character enough. So I'm going to assume she's a bad one. And then we have Zed. Who is meant to represent the Z block in uh, Tetris? He's okay. He's all about like vitamins and minerals, Ugh, protein, but like in the form of plant. So B tier because he's a cool robot looking dude. And then we have Miss Accord, who, similar to which I haven't gotten a lot of screen time with, but uh. She's cool. She's got a cat. I like the cat. So we're going to put her in B tier. Um, she throws the cat for one of her spells, which I think is funny. Uh, and then we have Liddell. Uh, and in her original appearance, they messed up her name so bad. But that is because of phonetic issues with Japan and how they pronounce L's. So in Japan, it, it, saying Liddell, it sounded something different. In America... For Puyo Puyo Fever 1, and I think 2, her name was Ryder. Um, but in the same... Oh, no. <laughs> That's horrible. In the same game, her name was also Rita. Don't know how that happened. But either way, she does not like her horns. She does not like them. She is, I guess, a dragon. And she does not like her horns. But she's also friends with Draco Santoros and... Uh, We'll call him the Dark Prince because that's his current name. Because they both have horns. And they are also, would you look at that, green. So, <laughs> I don't, we'll, we'll, we'll slap her with Draco because she's okay, I guess. 
I, I think it's more so out of pity because they messed up her name in Puyo Puyo Fever. Um, and then we have uh, Prince something. Uh, I forget his name. What's his name? Fuck. I, I, either way, I know that this guy, he is a fish. Uh, and there's a reason for that. He is an underwater king, I guess, or whatever. Uh, and I don't... He, like, speaks in an old-fashioned sort of tone. Like, he calls you a peasant during Puyo Puyo Fever, so there's that. Uh, we'll, we'll put him in C. But he also turns into, like, a small child during one of his spells. And that's because he turns himself into a fish to avoid being a prince. I don't know why or his thought process with that, but it, it works. So, yeah. And then we have this guy. I don't even know who the fuck this guy is, how he got on the tier list, or what even he is. But he looks cool, so he's going into S tier. Uh, <laughs> and then we... <laughs> okay. Not Sonic. Sonic's had a history with Puyo Puyo because he's had, you know, Dr. Obonic's Mean Bean Machine. A Puyo Puyo thing showed up in Sonic Mania. And he makes a lot of references to previous songs through his, like, uh, words. Uh, Sonic references Right There, Right On from Sonic Rush. He references his main theme from Adventure. He... Adam, do you, do you do you want to try that one again? What? There, there is no references of of Puyo Puyo and Sonic Mania. I think you're thinking of Runner. No, there's Puyo. You are. You gotta be shitting me. There is a reference to Puyo. There, it's not even a reference. It is straight up. <coughs> <coughs> it is straight up Puyo Puyo and Sonic Mania. Are you kidding? What? You're t you gotta be kidding, right? I haven't played this game. Oh well, then that that's fine. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, there is actually a th the chemical plant boss is actually you fighting against Robotnik in a Mean Bean Machine match or a Puyo Puyo match, if you will. Um, uh. But you can also unlock this as a playable mode after getting a certain amount of medallions through the Blue Sphere stages, or as they were yeah, originally just, called in development. Medallions. Huh? You just you just said medallions in, in, in Sonic in the same sentence. Sonic med. <laughs> I hope we're moving on. Um, but uh, getting enough gold medals in the blue sphere stages, which were in development called blue balls. I'm not kidding. <laughs> During development of Sonic 3, they were calling the blue sphere stages get blue balls. Get blue you can balls. probably tell why that was changed. Um, <laughs> so after that, we got a couple Sonic references. He references uh, Sonic Rush. He references Sonic Adventure. He also says Mean Beans, so it comes full circle. I'm getting a lot of this information from one guy, so thank you to that man. I forget his name, but he's really – he's a nice dude. I haven't talked to him, but he's, he seems nice. Anyway, we have uh, Raffi Soul, who is supposed to be the opposite of Ali. Who spreads love and joy, hip hip hooray, and Raffi Soul wants to take it away, uh, which automatically makes her better. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, Raffi Soul appeared in like one game so far, and then she's appeared as DLC in Puyo Puyo Tetris Two. She seems cool, I guess. I like her hair color. I like that, and I like the eye color too. Um, but other than that, I know almost nothing about this character. Um, other than the fact that if you were to invert their colors, Raffi Soul would share Ali's color scheme, and Ali would have Raffi Soul's. So it's like a little little nod. Um, then we have Cyrilli, who is a mermaid, who is in constant fear of being caught by fishermen because apparently in the Puyo Puyo series, if you eat a mermaid's flesh, you become immortal. Don't ask why. I don't know why. But because of that, I have to give her 70 points and put her in B tier. Um, and then we have uh, Possessed Klug. Yeah, that's his name. There's a little – you can barely see it, but in Klug's portrait, he's holding a book. 
And that little book is a little demon man. And under the right circumstances, he could be set free. And since Klug holds the book, he becomes possessed. Um, again, he's doing the whole, one of my glasses is covered by light, but my other eye can see you perfectly. Um, but he talks in a much deeper tone, which is why I think he's already better than Klug. Uh, so we'll put him in S tier, or A tier, I mean. Um, but this is where I explain how only half of the demon inside of the Klug's book is in, you know, the book. Only half of its soul is in there. The other half took the form of Sig, which is why he has one red hand and one red eye. Puyo Puyo lore. Um, and then we have you and Ray. Uh, and those costumes are not costumes. They are dead. They are actually dead. And I don't know why, but they just are. And during one of the games, they encourage Klug to become a ghost with them because it is a lot better than having an organic body. I can neither confirm nor deny this, considering I haven't died yet. Um, but I'd rather not find out. Uh, but they essentially just try and get Klug to die so he can become a ghost. Uh, they want to get a lot more than just Klug to die, too. They want, like, a lot of him. It, it's crazy. And also, you right here, the, the, the teal, blue, whatever, that co that one in the front, apparently she, they, he, whatever, was a lot more quiet. And the other one in the back was a lot more like you in a ghost form. Their personalities were swapped when they died. How they died is beyond me, and I really don't want to know. But, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll slap him in B tier. Uh, um, and then we have Harpy. I don't like Harpy. She's annoying as fuck. Uh, her singing is terrible, but she does it all the time, so you hear it all the time. Uh, it's terrible. And then we have Legamunt, who is a really cool broski, and he goes into S plus tier because I really like his design. Um, he's from the Puyo Puyo Fever game. Or the fucking Puyo Puyo Quest game, which is a Japan-exclusive mobile gacha game that I don't intend on ever playing, ever. Um, and then we have Lagnus, who was a sword man, who has been affected by a curse where he will turn into a young child until he levels up again. Which apparently they have kind of just retconned because they don't do the RPG thing anymore. He's cool, but I, I don't know. I'm not really feeling him. And then we have Rosate, who's a man. And I like his little ghosty that follows him. So we're going to put him in S tier. And that is everyone. That was awesome. That was cool. I got to talk about characters that I don't normally get to talk about because nobody nobody wants to talk to me about Puyo Puyo. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah. But I guess if we're going to order the S plus tier characters, we'd have to put. Uh, we'd have to put X up there, followed by T, followed by Dark Prince, followed by Echolo, followed by Lagamont, followed by Risa Kuma, followed by S, and then we put Marl, Dark Marl, in the front because, uh. Because of reasons. Uh, so, yeah. And that's not all we're doing today. I have a Kirby tier list to pull up here. Um, now, as you can see, I didn't pick the tier list because I forgot that I didn't pick one yet. But, assuming this is correct, this is just a bunch of random games. Okay, hold on. We're going to go into the Dream Friends and rank them again. Isn't that crazy? I've ranked these guys twice and now i'm doing it for a third time we're gonna order these in order of release which i remember thankfully um and then we'll rank them accordingly um so then we put these guys there i don't know why these guys are all the way in the front okay then we put dark mirror and there we go all in order as it should be so First up, we have King DDD. I don't like him very much in this game. He plays just exactly like Hammer Kirby, almost no difference at all, which is why I don't like him very much. 
which is why he goes into D tier. Not very good. And then Bandana D, he's just the spear ability, but they didn't put spear in the game, so they were like, oh shit, we gotta we gotta put Bandana D in there so we can have spear. Again, D tier. Meta Knight, he's pretty cool. He's got a cool sword. He can do a couple of original moves, so we'll, we'll put him in B tier. Rick Kine and Koo, I don't like very much because I wish that they would do a swap the swapping mechanic just a little bit better, but they don't. Uh, then we have Mark's Instant S tier. I love this guy. I love Superstar. Uh, then we have Gooey uh, D tier because I don't like Gooey. Uh, Adeline and Ribbon A tier because I really like the music that plays whenever you fight Morpho Knight with them. It's pretty good. Then we have Deroach S tier. His hat is awesome. Another S tier with Dark Mana Knight. Another S tier with Megalore. An A tier with Taranza. B tier for Susie, and then we don't even need to do any explaining. We don't have to explain why they're going up there. Which is why I am ready to move on to my favorite part of the day. Uh, ranking each and every possible Sonic game there is to rank. Oh, shit. That's a lot. <laughs> I changed my mind. We're not doing this one. Alright. Mainline Sonic. There we go. Mainline Sonic games. Why are they. No. Why are they ordered. Why. Why is it ordered like this? What do you mean it's ordered in order? Well, I meant like, why is it ordered like this? Like, why is it. Why is the tiers like this? A, B, C, D, F. And then we get rid of these. Tier lists have been avoiding E for the longest time, and I think we know why. So we have S through F, except for E, and these are actually in order of release. Isn't that awesome? Thank. Oh, no, they're not. Now they are. I think. I hope. But anyway, we're going to start off with Seji the Hedgy one. This can go right into C tier. And that is because it has not aged well. It's still a good game. It's what made Sonic, you know, Sonic. But uh, I feel like we definitely could do better, which is why Sonic 2 goes into S tier. I love Sonic 2. I like the music. The music is really good. Um, the unreleased tracks are also really good. Um, and I, hot I think those would have been better than the released ones. But uh, and Hot take. 2 is better than 3 and Knuckles. Hot take. Hot take. Spicy hot take. Yeah, e even even though uh, the the third game's music is literally made by Michael Jackson, it's I still like Sonic Two more, especially the credits theme. That shit slaps harder than I do on a table whenever I lose at a video game. <laughs> and then we have Sonic CD. Fuck this game. It sucks so much. <laughs> I love that game. It sucks, dude. I hate it. I beat it in a single sitting, and I hated every minute of it. Actually, I'll give it props. It gave us Metal Sonic. It gave us Metal Sonic. Uh, but that doesn't change anything nowadays. Um, which is why Sonic and the Game Gear, also D tier. Same with Sonic 2. These were subpar releases. C for Sonic Chaos, because at least that was an actual Game Gear game, along with Triple Trouble. Blast is just an F tier. That game sucks. And then we have Adventure. Now, recently I downloaded the better Sonic Adventure DX mod, which makes it the game look fantastic. I played through the whole thing in almost a single sitting a couple days ago. It was fucking fantastic. I love this game. <laughs> uh, and then we have Sonic Pocket Adventure. No, thank you. And we have Sonic Adventure 2. Um... It introduced Shadow. What can I say? S tier. Sonic Advance 1, 2, and 3. These are all made by the same company, so... There's only one way to rank these, and that would be going in order of release. Uh, because... So it, they peaked with Sonic Advance 3 because of the dual character you could do. Your main... Like, depending on your character combination, you could get a super cool ability. Or a really dog shit one. And then we have Sonic Heroes. Speaking of dog shit... No, I love this game. I Don't hate you? this game. No. It sucks so fucking no, much. It doesn't. 
there is so much they could have done better, and they didn't. There's a reason why this game isn't on PC yet. There's a reason why this game isn't on Steam yet. It's it, it's whatever. The music is fine. The music is fine. I like the final boss theme. And they actually did something competent with Metal Sonic. But the level design, it's just... Meh. What do you mean the level design? It's okay. It's it's linear platforming. And that's what do you mean? I hated going through fucking what was it, Mystic Mansion? Is that the name? That level sucks. And then the opening level, Seaside Hill. Sure, it's iconic. But when you've heard the stupid bear, ner, 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 the, the stupid fucking opening to Seaside Hill so many times, because Sonic Generations kind of just revived it, and that's all you really ever heard. It kind of drains the goodness out of it, which is why I sold the game within a week after buying it. I don't like this game. I have she Shedgy the Hedgy. <laughs> Hate me all you want, but I like this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It's a good game. I like it. And I'm only putting this in D tier because it's fun to break the game wide open. Uh, and then we have Sonic Rush and Rush Adventure. Rush and Rush Adventure aren't that different, so I've got to put them both in D tier. Secret Rings is not good. Um, and that's because the controls are terrible. The music is okay. The controls are awful. Sonic and the Black Knight is, like, the exact opposite of Secret Rings. The controls are fine. The music isn't that good. Uh... Other than Night of the Wind and With Me, I could not name a single track from this game. And keep in mind, Night of the Wind is the intro, and With Me is the final boss theme. So, there's that. Wait, what? why do you put Secret Rings at D? Because it's not... I don't like the controls. I think the controls kill it for me. The music's fine, nah. but the controls kill it for me. And then we have Unleashed on the 360, and I can only assume this is Unleashed on the Wii. Hot take, Unleashed on the Wii is better than 360. I don't know, it's just hot take. Sonic Colors, moi. This <laughs> is the Wii version, which is S tier, and then the Generations, which is on the also an S tier. And then Colors on the DS is also a, is a tier. I actually really like Colors on the DS. It's like a third Sonic Rush game, but actually really good. I have Generations on the 3DS. This game isn't that good. <laughs> then we have Lost World. Also not very... Eh, no, actually, no. C tier. Because I kind of like the Zelda... Never played it. I like the Zelda level in it, but that's it. Uh, and then we have Sonic 4 Episode 1, 2, and Metal. Sonic 4 Episode 1 is Ass Beans. Sonic 4 Episode 2 is okay. And then Sonic 4 Episode Metal is literally the exact same. And we have Sonic Mania. You know I gotta put it in S tier. And the big, the big one, the one I was dreading getting to because I'm about to go on the biggest fucking spiel about this game. So, where do I begin? Go back to 2015, me. I'm sitting in my room doing absolutely fuck all. And then I get the news that a Sonic game was just announced for the first time in forever. And it is, it's got classic Sonic in it. You know what that means? Generations 2, baby. What does Adam do the next day? He goes out and buys Generations with his allowance. What do you think happened next? <laughs> it turns out Sonic Generations 2 wasn't happening. Yay. Um... So, I immediately was like, what the fuck? Um, so, I waited and I waited. Stuff came out. I fell in love with Fist Bump, and I hate the song now. Um, <laughs> it's just stupid. The instrumental's okay. The lyrics suck donkey balls. Um, it's like the whole, yeah, it's the whole Sonic Heroes thing again, which is why I also don't like the game. It's too pushy with its message, and I don't like it. Um, I, I beat the whole game in an hour for a stream one time on, on like, my really old Lost channel. <laughs> on hero, uh, Heroes or Forces? Forces. 
Ah, uh, well, that's not a surprise. Uh, 2017 me could beat this game in five hours. Think about that. That was 2017, right? Sonic Forces came out in 2017. Holy shit. Five years ago, I could beat this game in five hours. Think about what I could do now. Think how fast I could speedrun this game and probably show up on a leaderboard. But I'm not going to because this game is not worth any money. <laughs> this game is not worth your time. It is not worth your money. Classic Sonic controls like shit. The custom character? What were they thinking? Why did they make a custom character? Where's the benefit in that? Who's making money? What? Who sees a Sonic game and says like looks? Who says this? Who sees a Sonic game and is like, if I can't make my own character, I'm not buying. Nobody <laughs> says that. And if you say that, grow the fuck up. <laughs> this game sucks ass. They shoehorned in Zavok, Metal Sonic. They managed to somehow shoehorn in its own villain, fucking Infinite. They somehow managed to make it seem like he was a last-minute decision. But I like his design. He's He looks cool. But he was so poorly written. His origin story is so bad. You have to buy a comic to fully understand it. If you have to buy external media to understand the basis of a story, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And who gave it the go-ahead? Hey, man, if I can't make my Sonic OC Ryder the Hedgehog, then it's completely out. I don't care if you can't make Ryder the Puyo Puyo character in your own Sonic game. It's not happening. They should never do this again. Th like, why? Sonic, okay, take the mobile game, Speed Battle. There is no custom character option at all. And you know why? Because Sonic Forces Speed Battle is actually fun. This game sucks ass, and it is not helped by the fact that the custom character is shoehorned in. Sonic feels shoehorned in, especially classic Sonic. Tails is nothing like how he was in the Adventure series. He f he literally throws a fit over Chaos Zero. He fought Chaos Three. He no, it was Chaos Four, I think. But he fought a much stronger Chaos form, and yet he shit and bricks over the original Chaos. Why? And he fought the Sonic Heroes Metal Sonic, so like... He on. literally fought like, Metal Overlord, and he shit and bricks over Chaos Zero. Not the real Chaos, by the way. The... Oh my god, the advertising for this game is something else. They played out scenes as if they were much more important, and they ended up showing up for like two seconds in actual gameplay. Sonic falling through space and into a space shuttle? That happens in the span of three seconds after a quick time event. What happens next? The level ends. <laughs> I think my biggest problem with the game has to be chaos. I've said in the past that it's probably classic Sonic, but my thought process has changed. Chaos has to be the biggest blow to the nuts I have ever gotten from a game company. First, I thought it was Generations 2, then I thought it was Adventure 3, and then all I got was a big, fat, steamy pile of dog shit. I ended up getting Splatoon 2 rather than Adventure 3 or Generations 2. It hurt so much. And what's weird is that Chaos doesn't even show up on the cover art. Does not show up on the front box art. Does not. Doesn't even show up on the back of the box. You know why he doesn't show up on the back of the box? Because he shows up in like three cutscenes and that is it. I don't count the Chaos clones at the end of the story where you're fighting, like they're fighting tons of clones of everyone. But even then, since the beginning, Chaos was a clone. That whole time, Chaos was just the, the Chaos in the game was just a clone. It was so poorly written. And what kills me, what, what, what goofs my gaff is that there is not even a 3D model for Chaos in the files. There is not a single 3D model for Chaos. It is just the cutscenes, and that is it. There is not a single 3D model for Chaos. There is not a single boss fight. But you go to, ooh, my favorite YouTube channel, which we're going to look up right now, Prosophia Gaming. You go to him. What does he do? What does he do? What does he, What's his big idea for Sonic Forces? What's his massive idea for Sonic Forces? He puts chaos in the thumbnail like he's an actual boss.